Okay, so uh, there's understandably been much, um, what, what panic's probably a good word, uh, around what generative AI technologies means for assessment in higher education. So this really short little video is just kind of some, some of my initial thoughts on what it means um, and perhaps what proactive steps we could take now in order to think about our current assessments and assessments in the near future and making sure they are robust enough for a world where students have access to generative AI technologies. So I think the heart of the consideration to me is around the idea of authentic assessment. I mean, first of all, I think it's really important to say that assessment is widely considered, you know, a really salient component of students' learning experience um, in the higher education setting. And it really does significantly affect the quality of, of their learning experience. Uh, and there's evidence of that effect. Um, authentic assessment has kind of gained quite a lot of traction in higher education because it can improve students' learning and more importantly, help them pragma pragmatically address any issues that they may subsequently encounter in their life post higher education in their professional settings. Of course, uh, like all terms, uh, there's lots of different ways authentic assessment can be defined. Um, but I'm using the definition here by uh, Gulikas in 2004, which state an assessment, authentic assessment is an assessment that calls for students to utilize the same sets of knowledges, competencies and attitudes that they could apply in a real life situation. So really here it's about the synchronicity between the assessment tasks that they undertake as part of the learning environment and those you know, that they may encounter in a professional setting. So there's a link between those two particular areas. Um, I guess more specifically, these types of assessments really tie into the idea of employability skills. So authentic assessments develop the subject specific discipline skills that are required, but also those types of skills that are often known as transferable skills, which, you know, are required to perform well in a professional setting. Um, so authentic assessment activities should really mirror the capability of students to use their knowledge beyond the immediate environment with, you know, with which they're undertaking the task and allow them to synthesize that knowledge in some way and test it in a real life situation. So, I mean, um, authentic assessment is a really interesting idea. Um, and for those of you who um, I'm interested in it. There's a review article here from 2021, which I recommend, which summarises some of the recent thoughts uh, on authentic assessment, including definitions and, and its benefits to student learning. In that particular article, it, it does ask four questions that you could take into account for seeing if your assessment is authentic, which are, you know, does the activity depict real context or not? How is the final output produced? Does critical reflection or metacognition take place or not? And do the activities, you know, demand things like cooperation or not? Um, so some good quest reflective questions. In terms of assessment modes, um, so there are several types of assessment modes which are commonly um, linked with authentic assessment and you can see the list on the slide here I mean there's probably no assessment types there which cause any surprises or things that people haven't heard of even if you don't use them yourselves um, obviously an assessment mode on its own doesn't make an authentic assessment neither does it make an assessment which um, you know is generative H AI wrote, wrote, you know proof in, in any way or form it's all about the application but a useful starting point to consider. I mean, as well as this kind of standard list, I'd say there's loads more. And just off the top of my head, I've just pulled together a few other, you know, authentic assessment types. Well, sorry, types of assessment which could be authentic if applied appropriately. Um, and if anyone's, you know, wondering about, you know, what other 
assessment modes may exist that they've never encountered before. There's a link in the chat to a resource that includes over 50 different assessment types in high, commonly used in higher education. But really the key, you know, with these assessment modes and with the idea of authentic assessment is, you know, what can I do to make sure that I have that? And I've got four quick tips here. Um, and the first one is about the journey. So the idea here is assessing the process of the, you know, the assessment journey rather than the actual product, rather than looking at the output, the bibliography, the website, the, the essay, whatever it may be. You assess the process by which they got to that end point. End point. You know, uh, and this could include things like reflection, you know, on, on the actual process. So the idea is that you're moving away from the kind of viability of the solution. You know, how successful was the thing that you're asking them to generate? How good was their case study? How good was their product? But you're asking them instead to consider and justify the choices that they made. Yeah, and of course, depending on your disciplinary context, is all things sorts of things that you could use in those justifications. You know, is it evidence informed? You know, did it consider all stakeholder contexts, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And that could be for the choices that are made. You know, as well as the choices that were not made. Um, you're less interested in what they actually produced, more interested in how they produced it. And of course, you can even assess the process by which they selected the criteria that they used in order to make the final product. And it's clearly a harder assessment to design uh, and create, you know, uh, assessment criteria before. But I'm sure you can see the benefits that this could have on a learner, really thinking in detail about the process rather than just focusing on the outcome. Um, so, I mean, that could inc include a reflective element uh, and reflection is a common part of many authentic assessment experiences. Um, I mean, obviously, generative AI can write reflections. You know, if you haven't seen those, it can write reflections. But what's much harder for it to do is write reflections on um Activities which involve individual experiences, you know, or, you know, lived experiences with individuals. So, I mean, reflections are quite common in HE and things like placements and work experiences. And obviously the actual experiences you have, the activities which you're reflecting on require, you know, at the very, you know, the, the very worst kind of skilled prompting in order to get something from it in generative AI that, that can be useful. So I think any kind of reflection is useful in authentic assessment, but make sure that the individual experiences of the learner are incorporated as part of that reflection uh, to minimise, um, you know, the impact that generative AI could, could have in, in creating that. The next one is about classroom experiences. So... Here, the the idea is that um, focusing on activities that take place in the, the physical or, or I guess the digital classroom, um, or lecture theatre, et cetera, et cetera. So this is not about moving to examinations or any kind of in-person assessment, unless there's a good pedagogic you know, rationale for it, of course. This is about maximising the classroom activity time you know maximizing the um opportunities you have to work with the learners whilst being very careful that you don't penalize those who can't attend on a given session for whatever reasons um so a good example would be you know with something like an annotated bibliography type piece of work these could be focused on key themes throughout the seminar series in your session and the papers could be discussed in class so you know, the discussion that takes place in the physical classroom give students to an opportunity to understand, articulate, critique, discuss, just listen and hear what other people think in the classroom space and use those to help shape, you know, their ultimate 
selections of articles and commentary they provide on the on the art on the articles in their annotated bibliography so perhaps that's a good example of maximizing the classroom e experience and the final one is about detail so what i mean here is setting tasks that require specific information that is not readily available online now that sounds kind of redundant because i mean almost everything is online um but let me give you an example here. So perhaps you, if you're doing like a business case study, which is a reasonably f common kind of assessment mode, I mean, if you set that case study on a well-known global or national kind of manufacturer or retailer or company, clearly there's loads of information available. And that's probably easier for something like Generative AI to pull out information that's relevant. So... You know, you could do this <coughs> on a completely fictional company. So you can make up a company name and details and, you know, demographics, product details and names and those kind of things. I mean, I'm sure generative AI can still tackle this problem, but it certainly would require much more astute prompting, you know, an application of the case study context by the student in order to do that, um, which will also involve some metacognition if they, <laughs> they try and do it. Perhaps... In this example, and it's really a good point to finish on, is it's much better to focus on the methodology in class, so working through a case study. And in this case, why not use generative AI as part of the methodology that you use? So show students what it can do and what it cannot do as part of the methodology. Um, and then allow students to go and apply this in a, in a case study of their own context. You know, let them choose their own example maybe include some limitations and who they can and cannot use so you're kind of recognizing the vehicles the tools they have available and showing them helping them use them properly in order to develop the case study so they're my, just my initial thoughts